Kansas City Biz Fest is really, it's a four-day business boot camp. And what we do is we bring in students from around the entire metro, and in those four days, they learn what it takes to open and run a business. One of my passions is just to see the kids grow, helping them understand that their dreams can come true. And that's one of the eye-openers that BizFest does for our Hispanic students as well as other students. What we love about BizFest is watching the change of the students from the first day. And by that fourth day, they've got confidence. It's an interesting transition, and they have a plan. They have a plan for their life. They believe in themselves. All of them are winners because they're going to learn basic life skills on how to be successful. Hello and welcome to KC BizFest 2014. I'm Leanne Neal, Associate Superintendent for Communications for the Shawnee Mission School District. And I am pleased to be here to bring to you the final competition and the final ceremony in which all of the participants in this year's BizFest program will receive their recognition. And also, um, they will be receiving, um, some of them, scholarships um, for continuing education. The final competition is coming up momentarily. Prior to that though and throughout the program, we'll be bringing you interviews with uh, members of the uh, committee that plans this program as well as with um, some of our higher education partners and students that are participating. So we'll start off right away with uh, my first guest who is Manuel David. Hello Hi. and welcome. Thank you. First of all, Manuel, why don't you tell us a little bit about you? Uh, I have a, um, I'm a small business owner, self-employed. My company is Global Control Systems. We do uh, industrial automation. Okay. And you are, your role is co-chair of the committee, correct? Yes. Liz Reyes and I co-chair this great committee. Okay. And we'll talk a little bit about what that entails in a moment. But why don't we start, am I correct in that this is the eighth year that Casey BizFest started in 2006? Is that it right? It started in, in 2004. This in is our 10th year. 10th yes. year? Yes. Well, yes. happy anniversary. Thank you. <laughs> and why don't you, um, some of the folks that are tuning in may be familiar with what BizFest is, but for those that aren't, can you just give us sort of an overview? Sure, sure. BizFest is a, uh, a four-day entrepreneurship program where we uh, bring uh, students from the Kansas City Metro, both Kansas and Missouri. We put them through a professional um, training uh, program. We bring trainers from uh, Tucson and El Paso. Mm -hmm. they, they, they specialize in this type of training. And they put the students through um, a business plan uh, development process. The business plan is really um, a, a part of what we're doing, but we're mostly teaching them uh, many, many other things that will help them in, in, their, in their normal lives. Their and normal I've, lives. I've had an opportunity to be here over the course of several years, and it's always a great experience. And I think, um, would you agree, I think now more than ever, at least from an educator's perspective, this program um, really brings in real-world mentors and provides students with workplace skills. Yes. Ab absolutely, yes. Many, many of the things we teach them, um, they can apply in, in life, not necessarily just in business. So they learn about finances, they learn about marketing, and those things can apply to the individual. And we have um, over 100 mentors that participate. We only have, so we had about 100 students that, that were selected out of 300 applications. Our first year we had 20, 20 students that, that we had to go uh, get without, without applications. It's, well, it's grown a lot. It's grown a lot. And um, so 100 mentors, 100 students. So I would think that the BizFest committee, which you uh, generously give your time to co-chair, uh, has a lot of tasks. Tell us a little bit about your role there. Yes, we have uh, various tasks, uh, fundraising. We have to contact um, colleges and universities for scholarships. Um, we have a, a, a mentor committee that brings in mentors and vets the mentors, uh, volunteering, uh, transportation subcommittees uh, to get the students to and from the event. We also have um, uh, the food. Everything's got to be done. Everything's got to be ready. We provide them breakfast and lunch. Uh, also donations of uh, money for them to purchase uh, a tie, a shirt, something uh, for them to um, possibly wear at the graduation. So we help them in various various aspects of economic and 
uh, transportation, whatever is needed to get them here. That's phenomenal, and I know that those partners really are so valuable and important from, and that you do provide, you mentioned clothing, but I know one of the sessions is actually on kind of dress for success, correct? Right, right. I think that's one of our one of the most uh, remembered sessions probably because we teach the students how to, how to, how to dress, how to shake hands, how to uh, look at people in the eye, how to um, present themselves. And uh, it's amazing, they're all asking, well, in an interview, how, how should, what should I do? So they're, they're, they're thinking ahead. You know? And so we teach them how to tie a tie. Many of them never done that. And so we, we go through a whole process. And educating. what I notice each year is the number of students that return, that have mm -hmm. graduated, mm -hmm. but they come back to support the program either as speakers or just to kind of root on that next class. Well, exactly. I know that you have to scoot, but before you, you get to the rest of your duties, um, maybe just kind of sum it up, maybe in just one or two words, what do you think the greatest benefit is for the students from this program? I think it's the contact with the mentors. I think it's... Um, uh, you know, a mentor may, may are, they're very encouraging to these students and, and they can say a word that the student can, it can change their direction in their life. I mean, it can be, it can be transformational for them. So I think that's the, that's the main benefit. And I think that's true. I've watched that transformation from the Wednesday when they begin to the final program, yes. and it is sometimes phenomenal. And I think even their families sometimes are not only so proud, but really surprised. Yes. So yes. I appreciate it. Oh, Thank you very much for the work that you do. And uh, we will look forward to the final presentation. Yes. In Thank just a you. Bit. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, we do have those final competitions coming up shortly, um, but we will be, be having the chance next to visit with Liz Reyes. She's the other co-chair of the BizFest, Casey BizFest committee. Liz, thank you for joining us. Thank you, thank you. And Manuel, sort of, he gave us a, a great overview, but I was hoping that you might be able to take um, our viewers through the process. Uh, he indicated- um, the, I, application I, the application process. The application process, and then the whole selection process. Okay, sure, sure. Well, well, we, BizFest started 10 years ago where they started with 17 students, and I'm not sure how, there was always an application process, so many of the counselors of the schools go out to the students and speak with them, and so we gather the applications, and for the last few years we've gotten over 200 applications, and so we have to, we have a selection committee that reviews the applications and then choose 100. And so then we have a, the other students, um, we keep on the list for if other ones drop out. And um, so then they get receive letters of acceptance or unfortunately decline that we hate to do, but we just don't have the room for it. So that's kind of how the selection. And what year um, in school are students eligible to, to apply? Juniors and seniors. Okay. Most recently, we chose the seniors just because of funding with the scholarships. So... And so then once they have received their uh, letter of acceptance, and mm -hmm. so they're a part of the program, talk, talk us through sort of um, the, just the overall program of, of moving them from their first session to then how do you select, how are the finalists selected? Because I know so, the judges are important. Right. So the committee, we have a committee that works, and so we select judges prior to. So we have two sets of judges, the first set being um, that they – each will, we broke, so our acceptance was 74 students that made it through graduation day. So first day is we mot have a motivational speaker for them. We get them ready and excited. Um, then we have, towards the end of the day, they do address for success. Mm -hmm. So we teach them how to uh, apply for applications, how they should dress, things, do's and don'ts. Mm -hmm. um, then important workplace important, skills. Yes, important workplace <laughs> skills, yes take the earrings out mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. tattoos, cover those up. Um, and then by the end of that day, they're kind of the beginning of what a business plan is. So that's day one. Day two, uh, we take them t through the next part of the business plan, uh, you know, step by step. And so by the last day, they're, not the last day, by Thursday, mm -hmm. they, we give them their jump drive, they have their business plan, it's the same template, same template. And so they're ready. They've got marketing, financial, they've got everything. So by that day, they are thinking about what's my business going to be about. And that's Thursday. Thursday. 
Okay, and that leaves and Friday. So, that leaves Friday, <laughs> which so starting Thursday afternoon is where they can really start working on their plan. Mm -hmm. And then Friday, it's pretty much all day um, that they're working on their plan. So, so a true entrepreneurial boot camp. It is. So to speak. It absolutely is. And yes. from years past, because I know this is um, the tenth, tenth year, year. Um, have you seen? Have you have you heard from um, students that maybe have in, been involved in in past years who have actually taken that business idea mm -hmm. and ha and seen it become a reality? Wow, um, I can't think of. Well, actually, lots. The Latinos of Tomorrow mm -hmm. was one of the first. Um, Biz, came out of the first biz fest. So Latinos of Tomorrow, which um, is the kids that are in high school and graduate, they're a group that gets together a couple times a month, and and different, you know, things are trainers that are that are that meet with them. So that's one. I know some of the students have um, done some in-home bakery that they've gone and you know got their license for business and. Um, so yeah, there have, have been some. The exciting thing is that I see a lot of our BizFest graduates that came back to mentor. And that's wonderful. And, yes. and I talked a little bit to Manuel about, I think that really is such um, a mark of success because they come back year after year and their enthusiasm continues to be so great. Yes. The program really changes them. So I will ask you the last question because I know you need to get mm -hmm. on to your duties. Um, the same as I did for, for Manuel and that is in just maybe a word or two. What, how do you describe the greatest benefit that this program um, gives to students? Uh, empowerment and confidence that they didn't have when they started. Very good. Well, yep. thank you. Thank you. And thank you so we much. look forward to the final competitions. All right. Thank, thank you. you. So the final competitions are coming up shortly. Um, the students will actually present their business plan concepts to the final judges today. And they are busy getting ready, doing that last minute rehearsal. And so while they do that, and the BizFest committee gets ready for the presentations today, we are going to have a chance to visit with um, some of the students that participate in the program. They're not competing in the finals today, but they're gonna tell us what the experience has meant to them. So my first guest is Brian Davalos. Yeah. Indeed. Brian, welcome. Thank you for having me here. First, why don't you tell um, those at home watching just a little bit about you. Where do you go to school? What year are you in school? Um, okay, yeah, definitely. Um, I go to Shawnee Mission South um, High School, home of the Raiders. <laughs> um, I'm currently a junior, so I'm one year away from being a senior. And it's um, this is it's great to be here, honestly. Thank you for having me. Oh, you're very welcome. And why don't you tell us from a student participant perspective, um, describe BizFest for us. BizFest, okay. Well, BizFest, um, well, the way I've seen BizFest um, is that it's an opportunity. It's an opportunity for students um, to basically get to learn an, an, another side, another aspect of business and to learn from those who are experienced who own small businesses already. So, I mean, the way I, could, uh, the way I would describe it is it's definitely an experience that you really can't forget for the rest of your life. So um, tell me a little bit about um, your business plan that you created while you were here. Uh, yes, um, actually, my business plan, um, it involves selling um, e-books to uh, school districts who are moving on to, who are transitioning, I guess I would say, um, the one-on-one -on -one, um, program and, you know, the program that involves um, schools using laptops and tablets to um, uh, further education for students. A little like Shawnee Mission because yes, we're getting ready for that digital learning initiative. Most definitely. I based it based on the fact that Shawnee Mission is receiving that program next year. Well, that's a timely entrepreneurial idea, I will say. Yes. Uh, talk a little bit about some of the mentors that you actually worked with in the program. Yes, um, act, um, well, all the mentors, they, they, had, they had a bunch of uh, great advice, um, mostly um, Mr. Uh, Mr. David, um, he uh, he basically you know he didn't he didn't do the business for us, but he guided us. Um, he guided us in a in a manner where it's not too much help, but they're not letting you do it by yourself. So um, the mentors definitely were 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 they were they were a great factor in us building the business plan, and um, well we owe much of what we've done to them today. So, um, how did you find out about the? Did you know about Casey BizFest or? I did not actually. I was originally aware of Latinos of Tomorrow group, and they are the ones who um, basically um, told me about BizFest. And and the funny thing is, I had forgotten about BizFest up until the point where my counselors um, came up to me and said, "Hey, BizFest is coming up. Um, do you want to participate?" And I'm like, "Huh? 
well, I'd like to, yes. And he's like, yes, you, you have a chance to earn scholarships. You have a chance to learn new business ideas. I'm like, yes, I'd like to, I'd like to try. I'd like to try and participate in BizFest. And are you glad you did? I am. I am very glad. And you'd recommend it to others? Very, very much so. I would. Well, enjoy the ceremony today and watching the finals as we are getting ready to do. And thank, thank you, you for joining us thank and good you luck for to you. Me. Thank you. And we'll have to talk to you about those ebooks. Definitely. <laughs> So as you can see, we have a number of, of really um, entrepreneurial students um, that are growing uh, their skills through this valuable program. Next, we are joined by Madison, is it Nesselhoff? Nesselhoff, yes. From Shawnee Mission East. Yes. All right. Well, welcome. Nice, nice to, meet, to meet, you. meet you. And why don't you begin by telling the viewers a little bit about you? Okay. Well, I go to Shawnee Mission East, and I'm a senior. Um, basically it. Okay. Well, let's jump right into um, to Casey BizFest. Uh, I guess my first question for you would be, over the course of the, I guess, four days now, what was your favorite part of the, uh, it could be a session, it could be really anything. What, what did you really take away as, as the most beneficial part of the experience? The motivational speakers, definitely. Yeah, we had uh, Jillian Ortega, and she works with Mary Kay. And um, there was one man from Honduras yesterday that came over to the United States when he was just 13. And he's now making a great amount of money. And it was just very, it showed us that we can start here and we can go on to bigger and better things. And tell us a little bit about the business that you designed as part of the program. My business is called Little Green Giants and it's a healthy daycare. So a healthy basically, daycare, yes. okay. So basically there's organic meals and then physically demanding activities all day and also educational as well to keep up with the other competitors. How did you come up with that concept? Um, well, my brother's in daycare right now and so my mom was telling him a little bit, well, was telling me a little bit about what they eat and what they do and it's just like chicken nuggets and I also am really into health and nutrition so I thought I'd just mix both together and make something that would be better. And how old is your brother? He's what? Just one? Yeah. Okay. Great. Well, that sounds like a very interesting concept. Uh, tell me about, were you paired with a specific mentor that helped you sort of um, go through the process of developing the business plan? I really worked with everyone. Yeah. Okay. Different parts. Um, I worked with a banker on all my financials and then just many others to get all my other information out. What did you find, um, because it's uh, the financial component, marketing components, w was there one that you found more challenging than another? Financials. I think math is just a difficult concept for me, but I mean, they made it seem pretty easy. Mm -hmm. They helped me a lot. So. Did you have um, did you have any knowledge about Casey BizFest before? Um, how, did, how did you learn about the program to know you wanted to, do, to be a part of it? Mm -hmm. um, our counselors told us about it and told us that it was a great experience. Mm -hmm. So I thought I'd maybe try it out. I haven't had um, interest in business before I came here, but I think now learning all about it, I definitely might look into it in my future. Very good. And I know that an important part of this are, are the higher education partners and the, some of the scholarship opportunities. You are a senior, so you are getting ready and thinking about next year. Um, do you have any plans set yet? Well, this is basically deciding what I'm going to do, but I'm thinking either Pittsburgh State University here in Pittsburgh, or I'm also thinking about Johnson County Community College. So Very good. We'll, well best of luck to you. It was Thank a you pleasure. So much. pleasure and uh, enjoy uh, the rest of the Casey BizFest experience. Thank you. All right. Um, if you will stay tuned, we will be back shortly. And coming up, we do have the final competition. Welcome to the 10th annual Kansas City BizFest. As for the Shawnee Mission School District, we are very, very proud to be hosting our seventh event today. And I want to first clarify some things for you. Those of you that were expecting Dr. Henson, he sends his apologies. My name is Ed Strike, and I'm pitch hitting for him. Hopefully, I will not go over uh, in this uh, baseball season. But uh, I hope to uh, offer a warm welcome to the Shawnee Mission School District. We are very, very proud to host the seventh event that we have been a part of with the Kansas City Biz Fest. So it's my privilege to uh, serve as a welcoming committee from Shawnee Mission. Before we start, I want to thank the students. Hopefully this journey has been powerful for you this week with the various activities. I want to compliment your commitment to personal and professional growth that you have experienced during this week. 
parents, family members, thank you for taking time to support your children and for coming to celebrate their success as they work forward in their career. It's also very important that we thank the many people that have worked behind the scenes to make this type of an event possible. There's a special thanks to the Kansas City Hispanic Chamber of Commerce who were pioneers in starting the first organization of their kind in this uh, United States. So I want to compliment them for their tremendous efforts and leadership. Special thanks also goes to the Kansas City Hispanic Collaborative who helped to put this event on. As for the Shawnee Mission staff, I want to recognize a few people that I know personally have uh, gone well above and beyond volunteering time and talent. Margie Prawl, my administrative assistant, has been working uh, diligently to help support this, as well as Janie Kazmaier, who volunteers her time to support this event. Connie Springfield, who serves with great enthusiasm to help uh, keep this event moving forward, especially in light of the uh, snow out that uh, complicated things a little. For the uh, Shawnee Mission Communications and, and, and IS staff, they're the people that make this work with their technical skills, their audiovisual support to ensure that the events go smoothly. So special thanks to them. And in short, this is really an event about students. So I'm going to uh, keep my remarks very, very short and just say thank you once again, students, for your tremendous dedication, because it is very, very easy to be distracted in today's world. There are many things that challenge you for time and your energies, and for you to make the commitment to do this and be a part of the KC BizFest is a tremendous, tremendous compliment to your endeavor and your endurance for making uh, yourself much better in the future. It's now my pleasure to introduce the co-chairs, Liz Reyes, Emmanuel, David, as they will be uh, taking you through the rest of the event. Thank you once again. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, first, we'd like to recognize a couple people, as Dr. Strike mentioned. Um, Estella Morales is the chair of the His, uh, Greater Kansas City Hispanic Chamber Collaborative. She's not here, but as, um, Amaryllis Valdez Dempsey is here in her place. Um, and also want to recognize Carlos Gomez, who is the president of the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. Um, it's their time and their effort that go into programs like this. But most importantly, also, like to recognize our host, as Dr. Strike said, this is our seventh year that Shawnee Mission School District has volunteered their facilities, their people, to our students. So I think in that, we, we really owe them a huge round of applause. Okay, so we, we made it, huh? Four days, I see the smiles, I see the more relaxation we made through the initial presentation. So, um, for some, uh, some of you who are not familiar with the program, we'll just go through, briefly describe the program, um, Liz and I, so. So BizFest has been, this is our 10th anniversary. Um, BizFest started 10 years ago with 10 to 12 students. And as the years progressed, we kept on adding students. <laughs> um, the goal of, the, of BizFest is to learn an entrepreneurship uh, business plan. You create it, we teach you, we give you the tools, it's empowerment, and then your competition is today, you're competing for scholarships. Yeah, so this is, this is a four-day boot camp where the students learn basic life skills, uh, they learn entrepreneurship skills, they learn marketing, business finance, uh, and they learned um, how to uh, basically open a business, what are the requirements, licenses, all of those sorts of things. But also they learned some valuable skills, things that they can use in their, in their life as they, as they go on to uh, college and to become part of the workforce. They'll take some of these skills, whether it's marketing, finances, and all of that, that applies uh, to, their personal, to their personal lives as well. 
You know, they learn also to turn dreams into reality. You can do whatever you want to do, whatever that plan is. Um, one thing also I want to mention, through the 10 years, 800 students have gone through BizFest. So that's pretty empowering in itself that it only took us 10 years and we've touched 800 students. So um, we all feel pretty good about that one. Yes, we had uh, some amazing, amazing motivational speakers, right? You guys agree? Yes, they were, they were great. Great, with Jillian Ortega, Carlos Vides, and many others. So that's, uh, that was a big part of what we were trying to accomplish this week, is to, to get you motivated. We had uh, 100 mentors that volunteer their time. Everyone volunteers their time for BizFest. Um, Manuel and I, Manuel has his own business. He takes a week off of vacation. Many people do. So um, we had 100 mentors that volunteered their time to come and be with the students. Right. We had uh, over 14 corporate sponsors who donated money. Many of the uh, corporations as well, they sent a group of employees to mentor you. And uh, they, don't, they don't have any other incentive, really, other than to help you. They really donate their funds and their employee times uh, to come and uh, meet, meet you, meet the students, and, and try to help out, try to give back. We also had 13 community donors, companies that donated food, donated um, uh, drinks, the time, uh, your notepads, all of these corporations assist us in, in putting this together. Um, and our committee, we do have a BizFest committee that are people that volunteer their time uh, for this program. They're just as passionate about the program as you are. So um, we need to thank them, the committee, because we work a year. We'll start working on this, you know, in a month or so for next year's BizFest. Yes. So something that I found interesting, this is a very uh, diverse group from various countries. And we have, we have uh, students in, in this BizFest class from uh, Liberia, from Brazil, from Guatemala, from Honduras, Mexico, Colombia, Ecuador, and Spain. So it's quite a, quite a group. So. so as we get closer to the naming the six finalists, which, is, you know, which was hard, six judges, we had judges to uh, hear the business plans, um, in the end, you're all winners. I hope you feel that way. We, that's our goal, is that, that you came day one and you didn't know how to do a business plan and maybe you lacked confidence. But today, we hope that you look at the world in a different way. Good. So um, we'll make sure, just a little housekeeping things here. Make sure your cell phones are, are turned off um, with res for respect to the students that are going to be presenting and uh, for the folks that put this together. But before further, um, I'd like to recognize our facilitators, our trainers. They did a great job. They, I think that they connected well with our students. They conveyed the material, and they truly care about uh, your presentations. So Cynthia Vega, Esther Vega, and Veronica Vega. Yeah. OK. So we just want to go ahead and address you guys. Um, on behalf of the rest of the trainers of Veronica and, and Esther, we just go ahead and want to go ahead and let you know that we are so, so honored to have spent the last four days with you guys. We have gotten to know some of you guys um, a little bit more than others, but knowing you and seeing your business ideas have just made us um, appreciate and see your talent. So we I want to go ahead and let you know that it's been a privilege to be working with you guys. And thank you for showing your commitment and seeing this through. I know it hasn't been easy. Some of you guys have had it hard, but we are so grateful. Um, that you have done it and seen this through. Um, also to the parents, we are so happy that you're here. Thank you for supporting your sons and daughters. I'm sure you can see this group of people, of, of, of young ladies and men, they, are, they look so great, not only physically, but I know you know back home the value that you have in your children. So thank you for supporting them and, and continue doing that throughout their lives. Um, un mensaje para los padres. Estamos muy contentos de que están aquí apoyando a sus hijos. Hemos tenido el privilegio de estar trabajando con ellos y 
siempre se dice que um, los hijos son una reflexión de sus padres, eso en realidad es el caso, ustedes deben de estar muy orgullosos por tener estos hijos y hijas que están aquí presentes hoy. So thank you again, um, we often say that children are a reflection of their parents and you should be very proud to see what we see, uh, what we've seen this last four days, okay? So again, BizFest, class of 2014, we love you and wish you the best. Oh, okay. Let's see, guys. What do we have? Yeah. <laughs> Very good. Um, we'd like to thank the uh, BizFest committee. Uh, Liz Reyes and I are privileged to be part of that. We have been for six, seven years, maybe longer. And uh, it, uh, it takes a lot of work. It really does. There's about um, 15 or so people here that, that are part of that group. And uh, it just, it's just so much work. And we meet um, every other week for, for a long time. So we take a lot of time. So um, if you would please stand up and, and be recognized. Um, well, I'll read these names briefly, uh, Liz and I. So of course, Amarillis Valdez Dempsey. Um, please stand, if, wherever you are. Barbara Clark Evans. Yeah, Brian Patrick. Um, we have Connie Springfield is in our committee as well. Ed Marquez. Yes. Uh, Jared Hill. Liz Holloway. Yeah, and we, got, uh, we have Lori Hewitt, Melinda, Melinda Bryan Smith. Uh, Melissa Jimenez as well, Randy Lopez, right. Shane Cuevas, uh, Stancia Jenkins Whitcomb, and Valerie Coyazo. So let's give them a round of applause. They do a great job. Um, I'd like to recognize our preliminary judges. They did a great job. They listened to 12 presentations each, and it takes a lot of effort. And so they were uh, very impressed with everyone. They were truly, truly impressed. You did a great job. We have uh, Hector Silva, Awilda Olson, Dr. Clark. We have uh, Eric Negrete with uh, Design Eric Negrete, Alan Lenoir, Kansas City, Kansas Community College, and Silvia Arellano Gwynn um, that helped us um, this year. So thank you for your time. So we want to recognize all, um, all the uh, volunteers who took their time, because many of them, many of them were past BizFest students, uh, our committee, the Shawnee Mission School District. So if you'll please stand so that we could recognize you properly. All the volunteers for KC mentors. BizFest, mentors. Yeah. And to the parents, I know some of you are Spanish speaking, so Manuel will translate. To the parents, thank you so much for allowing us to touch your students' lot, your children's lives. Um, it really means a lot to us. We get attached to these kids, and you have raised wonderful children, and so we thank you for allowing us to be a part of their lives. Yeah, uh, yeah sí, gracias a los padres por darnos la, el privilegio de, de tener a sus hijos aquí cuatro días y, y de eh, la oportunidad de enseñarles sobre negocios, sobre, sobre la vida. Conocieron muchos mentores, mucha gente eh, que, que vino aquí a ayudarles a conocerlos. Muchas gracias. Um, another important recognition um, is to recognize all the educators in the room. So please raise your hand. We have, uh, we want to thank all the educators. These are the folks that are involved with uh, schools. They are uh, teachers, counselors. So please stand, raise your hand. Um, you are the front lines of our challenge with, in, in education. So thank you. All right, so now our final judges, I'll just uh, mention their name, and if you stand up and raise your hand. We have um, Rachel Hack, Merlot. She is with Google Fiber. 
next, next to Rachel is uh, Edgar Palacios. He's president of Young Latino Professionals. <laughs> Mr. Joe Medina, he's with Kansas City Power and Light. He's supervisor of combustion turbine systems. Um, we have Cristal Perez. She is the Latinos of Tomorrow founder. She founded the LOTS and she's also the 2000, 2004 Kansas City Business graduate. Ten years ago, she was sitting where you are. And she now is a member of the Luna Northeast chapter as well. So good to have you. And last is Rene Aguirre. He is editor-in-chief of Enye Magazine. Okay, so here's the tough part. So now we're going to announce the six, six of you. It was very hard. So the, all the judges got together, and we had a list of um, 15 or so that we started with. And then we had to narrow it down to the top six. Very hard task to do. So you're all winners, really, you all won. You won through uh, participating in this program, you finished, you're graduating now, you learned a lot. I think it's fair to say you, you are much better today than you were four days ago. Right? You've learned a lot, you experienced a lot, and we were delighted to see that. So we have scholarship opportunities for all, not only the six finalists. Just uh, keep that in mind. So. Um, it was very hard to select, and uh, I will, as I call your name, you will um, walk out on this side and provide your USB drive to someone over here, and they will um, assist you with microphones, etc. So please go to this side of the of the room, and so I'll um, read these in, in in not in any particular order, and um, so here we go. So the first one. Um, Kansas City 2014 finalist is Mr. Alex Ayala. He's with me. He is um, a student, Mill Valley High School. Next is uh, Madison Nesselhoff, Shawnee Mission East High School. We have D'Angelo Hicks with J.C. Harmon. Uh, Viviana Rodriguez Soto, Shawnee Mission East High School. Uh, Sochi Rivera, Olathe North High School. And, and next, last, but not least, Jocelyn Santos, J.C. Harmon High School. While we are waiting for the finalist competitions coming up, I'm joined by Carlos Gomez. He's president and CEO of the Greater Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, Greater Kansas City Hispanic. And you're an important partner in this event. Tell us about the chamber's involvement. Yeah, actually, uh, this event is put on by our sister organization. We have a 501c3 called the Greater Kansas City Hispanic Collaborative. And uh, it is the members of the chamber that invest into the collaborative that, to give back to the community. Okay, so this is sort of the community service arm of the chamber? Correct. Is that correct? Correct. And it's a fantastic event. What is your role or your involvement? Do you mentor here? or? I, I was. I was mentoring here throughout the week, um, and uh, including this morning, which a lot of the students wanted to practice their presentations. Um, but also raising money. It takes a lot to put on uh, this event. So going out and getting the partnerships in the community and uh, and the, the support that we needed to put this on. Let's talk about the partners just a little bit, um, because my guess is you're always looking for new individuals who might want to come and partner. Is that right? That's true. That's true. <laughs> I'll do a little plug for you there. <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> Yeah, you know, um, you know, thanks to a lot of great corporations, small businesses, individuals, we have people that write us a check for $50 to companies that write us a check to seven, ten thousand dollars $10,000. And all of it is used to the program for scholarships, to bring in the facilitators because they're from, they're from out of state, and to ensure that the program continues to have the quality and, and growth. And um, in addition to the funding partners, it, you also have a lot of in-kind 
time donation. Definitely, and you know what? Uh, that is just as important, if not more so. Um, thanks to all the, the school systems um, and a lot of people who just give their, their talents. We have people from corporate America, small businesses, and they have an expertise in certain arenas and they come and offer that to us to help us uh, put this program on. Well, I know this will make you feel good. One of the students that we interviewed just a few moments ago, she really said that it was, uh, well, one said the mentors and the other said the guest speakers were really the most meaningful. So keep up the great work. I know you have a presentation coming up, but thank you for talking with us. Uh, thank you for having us, and thank you to the Shawnee Mission School District for allowing us to be at the Indian Creek Technology Center. You're welcome. Thank you. We'll join the Latinos of Tomorrow presentation that's going on, and then shortly, up next, we will be seeing the final competitions for BizFest. Stay tuned. Okay, we have been joined by an, another important partner, Eric, is it Negrete? Negrete. Negrete. Uh, welcome. Tell us a, a little bit about you and what is your role in BizFest? Mm -hmm. Thanks. Um, I have a design firm, uh, in, uh, Interiors uh, Design Eric Negrete. Uh, I'm involved in the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. So I was invited about three years ago to be a part of BizFest and since then, I look forward to this time every year. Um, the kids, the students inspire me. I'm constantly impressed on the diligent work they do and seeing the transformation from the first day to now. Let's talk a little bit about that because I think that um, for me is always the most maybe rewarding is, is seeing them um, come in that first day and then the confidence and, and everything that they leave with. Talk a little bit about that from a perspective of a mentor. That's exactly right. Um, to see the metamorphosis, but for them to realize uh, within themselves what their potentials are, um, it, it really is like seeing a, watching a light bulb turn on. They never realized what potentials they have, and then to realize that and to be able to present, not even not even before presenting, developing a business plan, uh, realizing they can do it um, and can be successful and also identifying with people in our community that uh, have been where they are. They, uh, just realizing the potential and seeing their growth is inspirational to me because um, these people are going to be in our workforce in a very short period of, period of time and a lot of them uh, or some of which come from immigrant families and that wasn't the realization of their parents or possibly their grandparents and now they see uh, a, a different world opening up to themselves. What, um, I know that you've worked for three, three years or is this maybe your fourth year, uh, are there some areas that students um, focus on each year that um, seem to be most challenging where you think this program really helps them? Right. Uh, well, uh, I'm seeing over the years, um, you know, maybe the first year, I say it could have been heavy in child care. Mm -hmm. This year, I see more interest in the medical field, in technology, and these are probably areas that weren't always considered or Latinos wouldn't identify themselves in that uh, type of field. So this program really does reflect current trends in helping students prepare for the workplace of today and tomorrow. We don't know what that might bring. Exactly true. Well, thank you very much for your volunteer service and for visiting with us today. Thank Appreciate you. it. Coming up, we will have the final competitions for KC BizFest 2014, and we will join the program in progress. Tell us uh, your full name and the school you attend. My name is Navalin de Dios Falcón, and I go to Shawnee Mission West High School. Shawnee Mission West, all right. Um, tell us about your experience in KC BizFest. My experience has been amazing. Everyone here is so welcoming. They feel like a family. Um, I really like it all because I've learned a lot throughout all this. Did you have any aspirations before BizFest um, of perhaps designing your own business? Well, since my father's in the business major, mm -hmm. um, he's been kind of per, like making me want to join. Mm -hmm. 
but I, at the end, I just want to be a teacher. Really? Yes. Well, we're glad to hear that from an educator's perspective. Um, but talk to us a little bit about, um, maybe about some of the speakers and some of the things that, whether you go into business or you go into the field of education, lessons that you'll take away from this experience that will help you. Um, I believe that going in, like, to this experience is going to make me learn more about um, my future and my college and not to be so shy. I'm a very shy person, as you can kind of tell. Well, I think the experience has definitely developed your confidence because for you to be on with our viewers uh, is tremendous. So we wish you a great success. And um, it, it, did you tell us um, what your business plan was that you presented? Oh, my business plan is a psychology school, like a psychology center. Um, I wanted to help people that have been through traumas and that have been hurt a lot because not only I have been hurt a lot, but I know what they feel. I just want to help everyone. Well, your, your compassion shines through, and congratulations to you, and thank you for joining us. All right, um, coming up uh, soon, we will have the sixth finalist presentation, and that will be a great treat. Um, seeing the students, the plans that they've put together with the help from mentors um, is, is something that's very exciting every year, and we'll look forward to um, then the final winners and the scholarships that will be presented today to the students, not just the finalists, but the students that are participating are really important to the students so that they'll be able to realize their dreams of continuing their education. I'm joined now by Connie. Springfield. And Connie, welcome. Thank you. Connie, um, we'll talk a little bit about your role with KC BizFest, but your role in the school district is what? Yes, pretty much in the, my role in the school district is just to make sure that as Shawnee Mission School District is the host of Kansas City BizFest, I pretty much take partake in assuring that uh, this program is successful continuously and of course it is a preparation that takes all school year not just something that we plan for a month or two it is an all school year uh, requirement for uh, preparation and this is in addition your role on a regular basis for the district is associate principal at Shawnee Mission West that is correct which is something I really enjoy <laughs> I still have contact with the students and that is also my uh, my other way of helping students um, passing the word about Kansas City Biz Fest. Talk to us a little bit about, this is a metro-wide, oh, this program's open metro-wide to students, um, high school juniors and seniors. Um, talk a little bit about from what you see from the student perspective. The kids come in from a variety of different experiences and they leave, um, I've heard some of them describe it as, this is, seems like a family to me. Talk a little bit about that experience for the students over the four days. Oh, sure. Uh, during the four-day course, it is it feels like day and night. Uh, we get students from 32 different high schools. Um, we do pretty much talk about a common goal. They are coming from different uh, backgrounds, kind of a little bit of the different cultures, uh, but you bring them in to KC BizFest and our common goal is to teach them those communication skills, to be able to advocate for themselves. So it's not just about the entrepreneurial skills that they come out with, but lifelong lessons and uh, just gives them more direction of what they want to do after high school. And they feel as if, oh, you know, this person or this mentor believes in me. I know I'm able to continue. And so Casey BizFest does that for those students. That's tremendous. Um, and I know that you've had contact with students that have been a part of the program, have graduated and gone on. And when they come back, because they come back as mentors, um, do you see that they're carrying the confidence and the lessons learned here um, into the to, to help guide them to success in the future? Most definitely. A lot of them come back and visit, or if we need to call them to mentor, you do not need to continue to call them. They are ready to jump in and help out. They're very appreciative uh, for Casey BizFest. Uh, some of them had no idea where it was going to lead them and they ended up, I mean, getting full scholarships, paying for their entire program and so 
whereas they did not have the financial means or the parental support to be able to go any further. Well, let's talk about that because your role um, outside of BizFest, day in, day out, is working with high school students within our school district. Talk a little bit about that from an educator's perspective about the critical importance of those higher education partners and the donations that come in to help support the scholarships here. Sure, it takes a lot of advocating uh, and to make sure that the higher education partnerships continue to uh, be part of, of that experience for us and a lot has to do with promoting the program at what it does and what it can do for their colleges as well. So we have uh, Kansas City, Kansas Community College uh, providing those scholarships. We have Johnson County Community College and uh, Donnelly College as well helping with that. And so we want to be able to expand further to touch even more students to have that opportunity to go on. Very good. Now, earlier this year, I believe you had a special honor yourself. Will you talk a little bit about that? Sure. Uh, I was actually recognized for La Nueva Latina, and it was through Verizon Wireless, or Verizon, the company of Verizon, and it is a national, uh, pretty much, award. It's called the Estrella Award, and so they select uh, about 12 people out of the entire United States. And so I was the one that was recognized, and I wasn't one of the top finalists, but just being recognized was, I mean, that was an honor. So. Well, that's tremendous. Well, hey, Connie, um, Connie, let's talk a little bit about um, the selection process and what we're going to see coming up, because we have the finalist competitions coming up. and. Talk, having been a part of this for several years, talk about the students. What are they going to be feeling? What kind of things are the judges maybe looking for? Walk us through that process. Sure. There's uh, many of, uh, we have a list that our judges look at, our preliminary judges. So we have a set of preliminary judges, and then we have uh, six uh, final judges, or five final judges, sorry. And so the preliminary judges look at, you know, confidence, how they introduce themselves, how they present their plan, and is their idea, you know, something that can be applicable as well. And so those are just some of the key things they look for. And so the students pretty much present what they've been practicing these last four days and being able to apply it to someone in the professional fields and give them the real world experience of, you know, this is what it takes to present a business plan or get a loan or, uh, you know, helping you achieve that dream that you want to make happen. The students, what do you think is um, the most nerve-wracking part for the students as they prepare for the final presentation? Oh my goodness, a lot has to do with the unknown. They're not sure, you know, what's going to be in that room once they go in there. And you pretty much, we help them out with remaining focus and explaining to them, hey, you're here because you have a passion for your whatever it is you um, want to put into place with that business plan so we try and direct them so you know in real life you're gonna have these types of, uh, of, of, of situations coming your way and it's just the way you overcome them and one is to approach that fear and that's that's another uh, thing that they learn at BizFest and just how to be very confident in what they know because they're the professionals at their business plan, not the judges. All right, well, thank you. And Connie, we're going to join the program in process. Chamber, at this time, I'm going to invite Rachel Hack with Google to come up here. You know, <clears throat> this event could not happen without people not only believing in the program, but really believing in you. There are companies like Google that understand that you are the future business owner, you're the future CEO of corporate America, you're the future leader, elected official, and we want to thank Google uh, for joining us this year and really, really making a presence in this program. And I'm going to hand it over to Rachel uh, just to say a few words. Thank you, Carlos. Part of Google's mission is to make the world's information universally accessible, and we also believe education should be universally accessible. So it is our privilege to support this program, and congratulations to all of you, and uh, good luck in advance to those who present today. I'm really excited to be here. So with that, Carlos, here's the Google our support. Google has given us $7,000 for this program.
now we're going to start the presentations, but no, we have so many sponsors, State Farm, Sprint, the list goes on. We have them in your booklet. Look at all the sponsors that we have. Very good. Okay, so now our first presenter um, is Alex Ayala with uh, Mill Valley High School, okay? Thank you. Hi, how are you? My name is Alex Ayala. Nice to meet you. Hi, I'm Alex. Nice to meet you. Alex, thank you so much. Thank you. Hi, nice to meet you. Thank you. Thank you all for taking time to uh, listen to my presentation. So, first of all, I'd like to say that um, this is my company name. It is an acronym, but also it means something to my company. The name of it is RCA, which if you know audio, RCR standard red and white cables that you use to plug in to most electronic or most, you know, uh, audio equipment. So with that, I use the acronym Real Cheap Audio. And with that, I also created my slogan. When you plug it in, you always go red to red, white to white. So when you come to us, the price is right. That's how I came up with that. So, so that's for my company description. Our mission statement is basically to provide various assortments of high quality audio equipment, anywhere from DJ controllers, speakers, audio cables, microphones, you name it, we have it. But also, in addition to that, we also provide a fully functional studio that allows people to come and rent time to be able to record whatever style of music they like. Now, if you don't have the budget to buy all these speakers and all this equipment, you can rent it for parties, such as like a quinceanera or you're having like a birthday party, but also you don't have a DJ, DJ's for hire. So, and we offer much more. So basically our operations will be open Monday through Saturday, 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. because I can't really think of anyone who wants to go to an audio store at 8 p.m. or you know, something like that. So. <laughs> Um, it is closed Sunday, um, you know, I like to rest too, um, and it is closed on national holidays such as Christmas, Thanksgiving, you know, uh, things that schools are usually closed for. And I would like for this business to be located somewhere in between the state line of Mission and across by the Westport area of Kansas City, Missouri, due to the fact that it's a high traffic area of people with lots of talent, lots of people who are into the music industry, and um, it would be a very high traffic people for both Kansas and Missouri citizens. Now, as for the management, I'd like my business to be a partnership, um, and I would have myself and my partner obviously be the co-owners of, or, you know, uh, owning the company, and under us, we'd have an accountant who deals with all our money, and under them, we'd have the cashiers. And along with the accountant, another top priority, priority in my company would be the audio specialist or the floor salesman supervisor. And under him, we'd have about two or three more specialists who would help you decide what you would like to choose, what you'd like to pick from, and tell you what it does specifically if you're not into the audio. And of course, we'd have a security manager who runs security cameras, um, you know, tracking system stuff that can save us money from stealing and theft in these expensive equipment. So. Now, our products and services, like I said, we will be selling top-of-the-line, high-quality audio equipment at a low price, which is why we come in and say real cheap audio. In addition, we also provide, like I said, this recording studio, and with that, I would like to incorporate DJ workshops or some sort of audio mixing classes once a month. It would be a small fee for people to come in and learn how to mix, how to incorporate different sound effects, learn your mixers, and all these different workshops, and maybe even have special DJ guests. And as for the benefits, so at our store, customers can come in, look at what they like, and actually get a feel for it. Now, if you go to a store and you see it in the box, you don't, can't necessarily see what you like about it. Now, if you go there, you can come in and test the products like unlike any other store. You can go in and say, oh, I like this or I don't like this. Coming from my DJ background, I know what I like in a controller, I know what I like in headphones, so I like to try it out before I actually use it. So this would give the person a, a good sense of wanting to come here instead of relying on random people online for reviews, you know? And so the prices, it varies. You know, DJ controllers can be anywhere from 200 up to upwards of $2,000. Microphones, cheapest about 40 up to 300, and so on, as you can see there. Very, various prices. Now, as for the industry analysis, according to TechDirt.com, the audio industry has risen about 15% from the year 2000 to 2008. And according to Audio Pro International, it is at its current rate, the audio industry alongside with the music industry is said to rise another 10% in the next five years. So with my competitive advantage, these are obviously the main 
three people, which you might see where you could buy speakers or you know, audio equipment. But the thing is, like I said, none of these other stores can you physically feel and get a hold of your item and see if you like it or not. And especially with Amazon, if they ship it to you, you don't know what kind of condition it's going to arrive in. If you come in, you can feel and get a feel for it. This way, the customers will have a more hands-on experience with their product and be attracted to returning. And as for my marketing plan, you know, a lot of people still listen to radio nowadays, and I would like to provide radio advertisements on popular Kansas City radio stations, such as like rap and hip-hop stations, pop and electronic stations that attract people who are into this music style of, you know, mixing and DJing, and I would also like to make attention-grabbing flyers and place them in high-traffic areas around the city and the metropolitan area that are very urban, and like I said, a lot of people, you know, go there for the music scene. So by doing this, I would also provide a chance for a free DJ workshop for the first people, 50 people to show up. And each month, I'm willing to spend around $450 on advertising alone, so annually that would make it about $5,400. Now for my target market. I didn't really have a said target market. They could be both male and female, um, anywhere from ages 15 to 30, but really there's no age boundary. I, know still, I still know older people who love to DJ, love music, love anything that has to do audio. It really has no specific uh, target market, but because these, this age group might listen to the radio more or might be more into social media, it might attract them more. And I specifically want to focus on the Kansas City metropolitan area. Now for the startup costs, this, this would be a general consensus of most startup costs, and my total startup cost would be about $35,400. And for that year, the total operating cost would be about $45,200 some dollars. Um, that is with my bank deposits and uh, my fees that I have to pay for the whole year. So it's not uh, too high, but it's uh, good for operating. <laughs> so, and as for the break-even, my store's inventory would remain low, so I would only order high expensive products that people, once they have a feel for them and know that they like it, they could come to our store and order it straight from the manufacturers. Now, right here, I would mark it up to about, with a gross uh, product margin, it would be about 50%, it's an average markup. And in turn, I would have a 90,000 $528 break-even point in my business. And to achieve that, it would take approximately three months of sales to break even. Since I can't necessarily say what type of product I have to get there, since I have so many lists of products that vary prices, I wouldn't be able to say how many of a certain product I need to sell. So it would take approximately three months of sales to break even. Now, and thank you for listening to my presentation. Uh, I, if you have any questions, feel free to ask me. Thank you. Any, quest any questions from the judges? Yes. So I really like the concept of the DJ workshops. I think that's a great idea and a great way to attract new customers into your store. Yes. Um, so if I was a customer and I was looking to have a great time, what were two songs that you would make recommend um, that would be in my DJ playlist? Well, it depends on what style of music you like. Do you like hip hop? All right, I would go with an old school classic, probably such as a Run DMC song or probably NWA, but I wouldn't name a song right there. And also probably maybe like the Electric Slide or some you know, older <laughs> song that could fit well with the R&B hip hop you know, um, dance song movement. So yeah, but if you're more into electronic music, I could give you lists for days. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, thank you. Good choices. Yes. Nice job, Alex. How would you keep on top of changing technology for your store? Right. So, as of right now, like, you could check manufacturers' websites and they will always have a list of updated products and services that they, you know, provide. So let's say I were going to order a new shipment of a new Mark mix deck from their website. Now, they would always tell you this just came out this month or this year, and if you order it, whatever, you get it shipped. Now, with all these websites, you can specifically order ahead of time. So if I can check like months in advance and say I would like to pre-order these products, 
in advance, I could get them to my store before anyone else, as long as I see that they are new and coming out and not in stores yet. So that's a way that I could keep new products flowing and new technology. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any more questions? No? No? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Alex. Now we're gonna welcome Madison Nesselhoff. Madison is from Shawnee Mission East. Hi, Madison Nesselhoff. Madison. Madison. Nice to meet you. Madison, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. My business is Little Green Giants Daycare, where we encourage you to join the pod. Our mission here is to prepare kids for primary school as well as implement a healthy lifestyle at a very young age. I read on CDC.gov that childhood obesity has more than doubled within the last 30 years, and I'd like to see that number decrease substantially. I'd also like to teach parents and kids that obtaining a healthy lifestyle does not have to be a chore. Our hours are focused around the typical workday from 6 a.m. to 5.30 p.m., and this caters to parents by offering an earlier drop-off and a later pickup. Our location would be at the former Carver Daycare Center in Kansas City, Missouri. We would meet the Missouri state requirements for child care centers by having a child care license, inspections at least once a year, and at least 35 square feet per child that we have in our center. And as we bring more children to our center, we will up our staff to meet the provider to child ratio requirements. Here, I will be the sole proprietor of my company, and I will have five staff underneath me. The two floaters will be good with all ages, and then we have a provider for infants, a provider for walking age to three, and then three to five. Um, our main sources are Toys R Us and hy V, and we focus on school curriculum and overall nutrition. The benefits of my company is that all meals will be organic and they will contain multiple food groups, and that goes for snacks as well. All activities will be physically demanding and they will engage the mind as well as the body. Our groceries take the bulk of the priceless at $2,400, in order to feed the six employees that we have, also the around 50 kids that we're expecting each month. The childcare industry is always demanding and it's expected to be even more demanding within the next 45 years. Currently there are 21 million kids under the age of five and it's expected to be 30 million in 2050. My direct competitors, are La Petite Academy, Bugs Early Learning Center, and Shawnee Kinder Care, which we all share the same aspect of the education, but they don't enforce as much physical activity and healthy lifestyle as Little Green Giants would. For marketing, I chose to do flyers and business cards, and also social media with accounts on Facebook, Twitter, and possibly review sites so that people that come in can share by the word of mouth. And um, I figure that the flyers and business card will be $12.50 a month, which would go to $150 a year. My target market are families and with any young children, basically, but it'll be five and under all year round. And then we will open up to older, to the age of 16 for summer care, which all families would have to be in the Kansas City, Missouri area and surrounding areas for convenience. Uh, my startup costs went to a total of 11583 which would be borrowed from a banking loan. And my operating a month would be 21367 I figured that each month, if I paid $800 through my banking loan at a 7.5 interest rate, that I could pay off my startup costs 
in 22 weeks, as long as I had at least 11 kids per week. Thank you for your time. I'm open to questions now. You are really sure about the location. Why did you pick that location? I wanted to decrease spending costs to start up the business, so I figured if I went to a current daycare center, then I would only have to remodel a few things. I may have missed this detail. What's the price to send a child to the little? Oh, 250 per week, so 1,000 per month, okay. yeah. Quick question, why would you choose to be a sole proprietor? I would choose to be sole proprietor so that all decisions could be on myself. I think it's a little easier when you are just the top person in the company so that you don't have to go to someone else to see if that idea is all right. Any other questions for Madison? All right, thanks, Madison. Thank you. Okay, let's welcome D'Angelo Hicks, Jr. of J.C. Harmon High School. Hey, I'm D'Angelo. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Hey, thank you. Hey, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so my business is the Harmon Hub. Uh, our slogan is the euphoria of success because as humans, we gravitate to success. And so we wanna give them that feeling of being successful in whatever it is that they do. Um, my, business, my business, I'm sorry, is actually an outdoor fitness center in a sense. Um, the reason why I chose this is because this is a map. Um, last year in 2013, when the health rankings came out, Wyandotte County um, was listed 97 out of 102 counties being the least healthiest. So our promise is to provide fitness, nutritional, and mental assistance to all who step on the campus. We believe in a healthy body and a healthy mind, and to achieve the healthy body, you, you have to get active. So here's where our, our operations will be. It will be through the school, only because we already have something set up with the school district. So here's Harmon right here, and all you can see is blank grass, on the canvas and trees, and they have 10 acres of land that's just not being utilized. Um, like I said, we're, we have um, a partnership with the school district. We didn't really need a business license, um, but we would wanna seek out like personal trainers and things like that with their certificates. Um, we're a limited liabilities company. Uh, we would have liability insurance from IDEA, and that would uh, cover up to $2 million. Um, again, the parent company would be USD 500. They would let us operate. Um, I'm the owner, um, along with a supervisor, Rick Malone. He's really um, active in the school. We also felt that if we had a senior and a junior on the board of directors, they're, they're like the leaders of the school. They're involved. They know what the, the students want. And then we had our principal on the board just to okay everything and make sure everything is okay. Um, here's a list of services that we would provide. Um, Zumba, uh, P90X, we would have a doctor and a nutritionist come in every, every so often just to keep creating that awareness um, to get healthy and to get active. Um, all the start services are premium services and they would cost $5 um, to attend each session except for 5K walks. That would kind of depend on the registration fee. So here is the proposed plan. And right here in the green is actually a fitness trail um, that's going to be implemented May 1st. Construction um, goes underway Tuesday. And what we need is exercise equipment and other things to help beautify the outdoor fitness center. Um, in our industry, there's competition. But the competition for fitness centers are really like in your area. And we don't have that in Wyandotte County. If we did, we wouldn't be so, so far down in the ranking. So when I come in, I would be the, the guy in the forefront. Another thing 
about this industry is that the mayor, Mayor Mark Collin, he um, implemented the Healthy Communities um, for Wyandotte, and what that was was to, to create awareness about nutrition and about health, and they have the same mission as ours. Um, we've actually met with Mayor Mark Collin, and he really liked our project. Um, we've been, this is how we market it, is just networking. Um, Phil Witt came in and did an interview on us for Reaching for Excellence. Um, the Kansas City Star, they um, have a subsection called the Dot, which features everyone from Wine Dot and Leavenworth and all the good things that they do. Um, we've been in there. We plan to have a press release, um, and from there we get a lot of word of mouth. So that's, that's really our marketing strategies. Target market, like I said, we're people of Wyandotte County, although our mission says we don't turn down anyone. For startup costs, a few big things that we need is a Zumba instructor. I actually spoke with a Zumba instructor that I know, and she said she would charge $1,000, bring however many people you want. So we wanted her for 16 weeks. That was $16,000. Um, salary was another thing. As far as marketing, exercise station and insurance bring the grand total to 53000 roughly. And so how we make money is, since it's in the school, what we would do is we would take the students, and, and like a, a class do, we would make them pay um, $35, and that gets them um, ID badges to attend all of our services. And not just them, it would include their family, because we want the whole community to come out and do those things. And so with our premium services and everything added up, we estimated that at the bare minimum, with the minimal amount of students coming, that we will make $54,000 roughly that year after we pay our startup costs. Um, we like to reinvest. So one thing we don't have at, at Harmon is a scholarship fund strictly for Harmon. So we wanted to have 10 $1,000 scholarships, um, give clubs and, or clubs and athletics money, $20,000 to divide amongst themselves. And since this was a student project or business, um, we wanted to make sure that those kept going because we saw the impact they can have, so investing in them as well. Thank you. <laughs> Questions? Yeah, I just wanted to tell you the presentation was very detail-oriented. I mean, you kind of really looked at everything from, from start to finish, so very good. Um, in terms of your competitors, um, how are you really different than the competitors? Okay, so how I'm different in, than, other than the competitors is we're outdoors, and um, there are studies shown that uh, people as humans like to be outdoors. Um, it's, we target our, we have for sure members because they're in the, in the students, student body, and so they bring their family. So that's how we kind of stick out is by kind of giving them that option. Okay, great, thank you. Um, do you offer a, an option when the weather prohibits outdoor activity? Um, do we offer an option? Um, no, it, it's really up to you. Um, if it does rain or, or snow, um, then we might have to cancel events, but the, the, the fitness trail and all the other things that are implemented in there is really up to your choice. We will clean it and everything. Okay, yeah. thank you. Yes. So on the pricing you mentioned for $35, Mm -hmm. That's one person plus the whole family? Or um, every one, person pays $35? Um, so the students, they would get like a discount rate, and that would be $35, and that would get them and their family of five, uh, all memberships. And if there was more than five, then we could talk something out to, to get that price right. And what is the number of students? You say the minimum number. What is that number? Okay, so... Um, we have 1,500 students, right? We, we um, hope that, well, we know that every student will have to get this because it's implemented in part of their fees to graduate. So if we have the minimum number, which is 35% of students in our body are active in everything, like as far as sports and things. So if we take that and we divide it, um, it's 525 students and to come out to every event. And we took a ratio where we had one student bring in one parent each time, so that gave us about 1,050 people at these activities, and that's how we got to our profit. Okay, thank you. Anything else? All right, excellent. Good job. Now we have uh, Viviana Rodriguez Soto. She's with Shawnee Mission East High School. So we Viviana. Viviana 
Rodriguez. Next, thank you. Liana Rodriguez. Nice to meet you. So today I'm here to talk to you guys about my business plan, Perlitas Home. We are an animal shelter helping complete your family one animal at a time. Our mission statement is that we're a non-kill business dedicated to rescuing homeless and abandoned animals, primarily from owners who no longer want their animals. What we are is that we're an intake center for small animals, primarily dogs and cats, that are abandoned or no longer wanted by their um, fa families. Um, we would, if they're in bad shape, we would help them get back in shape to be adoptable, and we would adopt them off. We would also have classes about responsible pet ownership. Our operations are Monday to Saturday from 10 till 7.30, and we're closed on Sundays and holidays. We will be located in Kansas City, Kansas, slightly outside of the city. Our permits and licenses, we would need to contact the Animal Health and Public Safety. There's a $100 fee for that, and it's renewed yearly, and we would need an inspection prior to renewal to, so that they could see that the animal shelter is in good health. The management, I would be the owner, and I would be in charge of accepting donations, paying people, making sure that everything is running fine, and we'll be a volunteer-run shelter, and the volunteers will mostly be in charge of socializing the animal, which means taking them out for walks, playing with them, etc. And they would also be clean, um, be in charge of cleaning the kennels and assisting the groomers and the medical staff. Um, our legal structure, we plan on being a sole proprietor, but we do plan on becoming a partnership later on once we expand. Our services, we offer spaying and neutering once a week. We also offer informational meetings to inform the community of responsible pet ownership. We also offer basic medical um, services. Our product would obviously be the animal that we would adopt. The features, we plan on offering good customer service in two languages. We also plan on having a meet and greet between the potential adopter and the animal so they could see if they're compatible. Um, a benefit is that we would help lower the, the number of um, homeless animals in Kansas City. Some of the statistics for, for animal shelters is about 5,000 nationwide. There's about 5 million animals that had a family but were taken to animal shelters because their family weren't able to take care of them. About 10% of the animals that are homeless right now are, on, are fixed, which means that 90% of them are running around recreating more animals. To leave an animal with us, it would be about $15. To adopt an animal, it would be about $125. We, for spaying and neutering, it would be about $85. The informational classes would be about $10. And then we also will sell t-shirts and hoodies. According to the industry analysis, it's, say, it's saying that animal shelters are a growing trend because more and more animals are being left homeless. And so we need more shelters to help and, and meet the demand. Our three competitors would be Great Plains, Waveside Waves, the Humane Society of Greater Kansas City. What makes us different is that we offer low prices. We would off also offer services in Spanish. Our marketing tools would be flyers, brochures, t-shirts. We would have the social media and also special events to get the word out about our animal shelter. We only plan about wasting about $100 a month for our marketing. The gender, it's about anybody that can own a pet, female, male, anybody over the age of 18. Our startup cost would be about $29,000. Operating cost would be $9,535 a month and about $1,444 yearly. And we plan on having donations so that we can help lower the cost of it monthly and yearly. And so these are some of the people that we would try to contact for donations. Our break-even analysis, it would, it would cost us around $800 to take care of 10 animals. And our gross profit margin is about 36%. We would need to adopt about 3,000 animals yearly to break even and about 51 animals weekly. Thank you. Do you guys have any questions? Have you, did you consider to make the business a non-profit? 
yes, I considered making it a nonprofit, but for the sake of BizFest, it had to be a profit organization. Yes. So cats are big business in YouTube and you know BuzzFeed and things like that. Yeah. Do you plan on using any viral marketing strategies in order to kind of attract people to your to the animals that you have? Um, yes, we plan on like taking pictures of the animals and on the social media, like Facebook, Instagram, and stuff like that. We would post the animals on that website so people could see what kind of animals we have so they can come in and look at them. Would you also do cute cat photos with funny hashtags? Mm -hmm. We could. <laughs> uh huh. Any more questions? No? And now, now we have uh, Sochi Rivera, Olathe North High School. It's the next presenter. So my business is Z Care. Home alone? Oh no. My company is for parents who have children in elementary school and they don't have time to pick them up and take them to another daycare or they can't, you know, they don't feel safe leaving them at home alone. So we will pick them up from the elementary school, take them back to our facility, and there we will assist them with homework and we will have weekly counseling. We will also have social activities and we will feed them dinner. My operations are open Monday through Friday from 3 to 10 p.m. It will be closed on national holidays and my management will be a sole proprietor and it would be me as the owner. I would have a counselor for once a week and then I will have three people to come in, help me take care of the children. The services that I will provide will be assistance on homework, the activities for the kids, for their social skills, so that when they move on to other schools, such as junior high and high school, they aren't so shy. And I will have a counselor, and then I'll feed them. And then if their parent has not arrived yet, they can, we will have them go to sleep. And then once their parent arrives, they can take them. A feature will be an after school. We have certified staff and we will assure that their, student, that their child is secure with our facility and it is affordable. A couple benefits is that daily tutoring, the weekly counseling, the dinner, the social skills and pick them up after school. The industry of childcare keeps on going because Everybody's making children, you know. And so then there's always kids in elementary school, and not everybody like works throughout the day. So then there's people that, there's young and older adults that go to like night school or get off work late, and they don't want to have the worry of having to rush everywhere just to pick up the kid and go home and then go back to work or back to school. My competition would be Olathe Family YMCA and the Petite Academy Little Wonders Christian Daycare. They're not, not much of competition because they close at six. I will close a lot later, like around 10, and my business is affordable. I would try to get my business around through school newsletter as for the children will bring home the newsletter, their parents will see that my business is open and I'll also put it on the city newsletter and the city newspaper. I would also have word of mouth with friends and family. The target market is parents who have children in elementary school who live in the Olathe area. My startup cost will be about $4,280 and my cost for operating for a year will be $63,010. To break even, I will have to I will have to care for around 34 children a month, and my gross profit will be around 70 percent. Any questions? Hi.
how many kids will you have in your in the daycare or the or the facility? In the year or just no, no, the like day? every given night or afternoon. It would be maybe like eight or nine, up to ten possibly. Up to ten. Mm -hmm. And what is the cost for a parent to leave the kids with you? It would be about twenty-one dollars a day or up to one hundred fifty per week. more questions? Okay, okay our next uh, participant is Jocelyn Santos, J.C. Harmon High School. Good afternoon. My name is Jocelyn. Nice to meet you. So today, um, my company name is Angels, and this is my slogan right here is changing the workforce area. Um, here, I got the company description, and it's a place where special ed kids and people of any age will get training for different jobs that they could get in the future. I think it's ridiculous that um, those kind of people are not getting the same opportunities that we get. So that's why my slogan name is changing the workforce area. They are not given the same opportunities we are in the workforce. Um, the operations that I have here is the business will be open from Mondays through Fridays um, from 8 a.m. through uh, pre 3 p.m. And I'm looking more into an urban area like downtown or the plaza as well. The management, my business will require a general business license and also the organization as the company grows, it will be starting for myself, the owner, the manager, and the coaches. Um, right now, since I'm starting, I'm only going to keep it to myself. I'm going to be starting it off, and as the com company spreads out, I'm going to add the manager and the coaches. And the business legal structure for Angels will be a sole proprietorship. The products and services, the services and training will be schools, airlines, restaurants. They are, will be providing all of the things for, like, example, all of those college brochures, the airline safety, um, what are they called, the brochures as well, all of those type of jobs. Instead of them paying other people, we're going to be training those kids, and they could get the jobs in the future. The, I am also happen to be a musician. I have to play three instruments, a vocal, piano, and drums, and I will be teaching music lessons, and I will be providing music books as well. The features and benefits, uh, like I've mentioned in the past, uh, college brochures, airline safety cards, pilot safety brochures, kids menu, you know, when you go to a restaurant and you have all the kids menu, the crayons, those kind of kids are going to be able to be trained on those uh, special type of jobs, and they will be, um, in the future, will be helped to get one of those type of careers. Uh, the music lessons, and $200 every two weeks is what I'm going to be charging, and it might seem like a lot, but my sister and her uh, husband, well, future husband are doctors, so I'm going to be working with them in their office, and they, uh, we're going to be working with insurances as well, so the insurances are going to be paying part of the amount of the $200. $200. The industry analysis, every five minutes a child with this type of disabilities is born. Um, that means that a lot of kids are staying at home, not doing anything after they graduate from high school, um, as well as a, it's unique in Kansas City. Uh, they also have something called Job Olympics that they're getting trained for this type of stuff, but it's only one time a year. It's a nonprofit organization, and uh, the kids only go there for like two days, and that's all they get. I see my company is growing because as I go through it, I'm going to try to make it grow. And also, the dropout rate of special ed students is twice as much than the general education students. That means the uh, amount of them are staying at home, not doing anything, depending on their parents. The sad truth is that their parents are not going to be there for their all the entire time of their life. Um, the competitive advantage. I have a special education teachers. I don't really see them as my competitor competition because they work at schools and their college degree does not really become a business to them. And it makes me better because it's a certified business with doctors that will be providing their help at any time. And I will also certify all of my students. Um, the length of the program is not really lengthy, but I will certify them and help them get jobs in the future. Um, Angels will be affiliated with schools, restaurants, airlines, and other businesses. And all of this leads to a successful outcome in the area. The marketing plan. I myself happen to be the uh, director of all the marketers for a farmer's insurance local agency. So I have a lot of experience with telemarketing. I also will have provide website and social media, visits to schools for conferences, newspaper. Um, I, have, I believe that $430 a month in expenses for marketing and $5,160 a year in a budget of $30,000 in savings. 
Um, any target market is anybody diagnosed with any type of disability, any gender, and age. And most of my customers will live in the Kansas City area, but if they are from other places, they are more welcome to come as well. Uh, the startup is $30,000 in savings, savings and at least $3,000 to start the business. That includes with rent, furniture, utilities, insurance, marketing, and supplies. And the monthly expenses is about $1,130. And the total expenses per year is $23,160. That means, oh, and I also have a chart right here that the number of students, I don't plan my company to start big. I start off with two students that cost the 40% that will be for expenses, the revenue, and the monthly profit. And as I grow up with 30, it will be about $3,600 every two weeks. And also, a, the break-even analysis, 30 students the first year equals to an income of $43,200. That means that the amount that I started off with is doubled up with 30 students, and the second year, at least 600 to 100 students are expected. That means that with 60 students, the girls' income per year will be about $144,000. With 100 students, the girls' income will be about $240,000 per year. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your time, and if you have any questions, please be more than welcome to ask. <laughs> Yes. Uh, nice job. Could you tell me a little bit more detail? Um, you left it pretty broad on all types of disabilities. Could you give me some examples of the kinds of people that you'd be interested in working with? Some examples are um, kids with Down syndrome and autism and all that type of stuff. Because I've worked with them in the past right now, and I found out that they are so smart. They are able to learn the same things that we are, just with a little bit more of patience and more dedication. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? So what inspired you to create this business? Uh, it inspired me because I happen to have a family member that has not really one of this, this type of disabilities, but um, he really struggles with learning and all of that type of stuff. And a lot of people have told him that he's not going to be able to do anything when he grows up. And I think that that's what really inspired me to make all of these kids. Because we're living in a, in a free country, uh, the citizens all have the same rights. Therefore, we have to take time to the special kids as well and teach them what we are able to do. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The five judges will uh, follow uh, Shane Cuevas and, um, and uh, deliberate. Uh, now we'd like to um, uh, we'll have a session on scholarships. We want to inform you about the scholarship options that you have just for having participated with BizFest. It's one of the requirements as you graduate, you can benefit from these scholarships. So we have Melissa Jimenez. Uh, to speak uh, on behalf of Johnson County Community College Scholarships, followed by Edward Marquez uh, of Donnelly College. He will also speak about scholarship opportunities with Donnelly. And Brian Patrick, um, he is with the Kansas City, Kansas Community College. So they will um, be giving you some information um, while the judges take time to, um, to rank our uh, finalists. So. Um, First, uh, Melissa Jimenez. Right. Good afternoon, everyone. Congratulations to all of you. Um, on behalf of Johnson County Community College, we would be honored for any of you to attend with us. But one of the scholarship opportunities that we have that is run through the collaborative, not through Johnson County, Three students will be entered into a lottery system for three full ride scholarships to JCCC. These scholarships will cover the cost of tuition for 64 credit hours, plus every credit hour that you are enrolled in will be um, $50 for books and supplies. And a student has about five years to use all of that money. So if you're not a full time student, um, it gives you some time um, and some flexibility with that. And the students will be notified. And then I have the pleasure of working with you one-on-one -on -one to make sure you're ready to get enrolled for the fall. Um, es un placer um, present, um, representar a Johnson County Community College. Yo trabajo en la oficina de admissions allí. Y um, nuestra escuela, 
um, aparte de las becas que ofrece BizFest, ofrecemos tres becas que cubre el gasto de 64 horas de crédito y ese costo también con esta beca incluye 50 dólares por crédito para los gastos en los libros y los útiles y los estudiantes que son los que reciben esta beca es algo que um, la colaboración colaborativa escoge los estudiantes, esa parte del proceso que tenemos nosotros, los estudiantes son notificados y yo tengo el placer de ayudarles a prepararse para empezar sus estudios en agosto um, y ellos tienen cinco años para usar um, este dinero um, y ellos solamente necesitan entregar sus grados, no sé si ya los tienen en BizFest, but we will need transcripts to um, document that you have at least a 2.5 GPA. Um, so, para uno de los requisitos es participar en BizFest, presentar um, con uno de los jueces que ya lo hicieron y tener los puntos de grados que es lo mínimo 2.5. Um, aquí vamos a estar un poco um, después de que terminen um, el evento para contestar cualquier pregunta que tengan. I'll be here around for a little bit this, um, after the event to answer any questions that you may have. Congratulations again. Felicidades. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Edward Marquez, and I'm the, uh, <laughs> let me say it again, my name is Edward Marquez. <laughs> I'm the director of admissions at Donnelly College, and for the past four days, I've seen you all just do great work. It's been a lot of fun, too, and so thank you for letting me be involved in being a spectator and a, a helper, and maybe sometimes a not-so-good helper, a, more of a confuser, but still with good intent. Um, anyway. I'm really excited about the opportunity we have as a college to continue our involvement with this. And so we are going to offer um, up to 10 full-time tuition scholarships, and that goes for as long as you're in either an associate program or even completing your bachelor's degree program. The, the equivalent value of this just on a one-year basis is approximately $70,000 when you take into account the total cost of tuition. Now after I'm finished here, I'll have some uh, details specific to those uh, de uh, scholarships, you can come see me and I'll be glad to hand it out to you. So we're really excited about this. It's a great program. The people who sponsor it, the people who are involved with it, everything about it, we love. Uh, bienvenidos, mi nombre es Eduardo Márquez. Soy director de admisiones en Donnelly College. Es un placer estar aquí con ustedes. Eh, vamos a ofrecer 10 becas de toda inscripción hasta el estudiante termina su, su bachelor's degree o su associate's degree. Y estamos muy, muy contentos de estar un parte de esta conferencia y con mucho gusto. Después de la presentación, si quieren más información, me pueden encontrar aquí al lado y te paso la información. Muchas gracias. Hasta luego. Hello, I'm Brian Patrick with Kansas City, Kansas Community College, and I'd like to congratulate you all on your completion of the BizFest program. It is quite an accomplishment. You have much to be proud of. And also on behalf of the college, I'd like to uh, extend the offer to come to our college. I had sent a letter to uh, uh, the, signed by our president about a month ago asking for applications to our college so we can help you plan in time. Well, uh, I want to let you know that due date for the scholarships has been extended until April 15th. But we'd still like to have them at that time so we can let everybody know what their plans will be for next year. Kansas City, Kansas Community College has been honored to be a part of BizFest since the very beginning in 2004 when it was first conducted at the GM plan. And since that time, we have offered scholarships to over 300 students. I have a budget of $100,000 a year to be used for BizFest students, and I want to use all of it. We provide scholarships up to $1,000 per semester for full-time students. That pretty much covers your costs, except for the book fees. But if, yeah, and you've seen the other opportunities, uh, you know, I hope you come to Kansas City, Kansas Community College, but we expect you to go to college somewhere. You know, that's a key to have access to success, isn't it? And you've all shown you're more than smart enough, and we'd be proud to have any or all of you, in fact. So congratulations again. I hope to see some of you in the fall semester, okay? So those are all the scholarships that all of you have the opportunity for. 
So Johnson County Community College, is you, you have an opportunity for that. You have an opportunity for KCK scholarship and Donnelly College. So they give a lot of money to our students. So they deserve a big round of applause. So we have some special awards that we want to hand out. So these, were, these awards were chosen, um, the recognition awards. So the mentors that have worked with you all this week have wrote your names down and have chosen you for these special awards. So let's go and give out the first one. So the first one, I'll let Manuel explain it. So the first one is the Most Entrepreneurial Spirit Award. A student with the spirit to create, organize, and manage a business, usually with uh, considerable risk to that, to that uh, project. So the Most Entrepreneurial Spirit Award goes to Oscar Hernandez of Wyandotte High School. And Oscar, come up and receive $50. Okay. Este es un, este es un award, lo, lo, I'll say it in Spanish. Este es para el, el, la persona con mejor espíritu em, eh, empresarial. Una persona que se organiza, maneja una empresa, un negocio, usualmente con considerable riesgo y iniciativa. Okay. Gracias. Okay, the next goes to the student who thinks outside of the box the most. The student who thinks differently or with a new perspective, creative, and original thinking. $50 goes to Kelly Young of Horizons High School. Esta es habilidad de salirse del, mon del molde, innovativo y tecnológico. Un estudiante que piensa en forma diferente, con una perspectiva distinta, creativa y de forma inteligente. Felicidades. So the next award goes to the most courageous student. This student possessing or displaying courage, brave, or able to face and deal with her fear, his or her fear. So this award goes to Andriana Ramirez Hernandez of Shawnee Mission North. Este es el más valiente, una persona que posee y presenta en forma valiente y capaz de enfrentar eh, sus miedos. Felicidades. So this award goes to the most tenacity. This student is one who demonstrates uh, and persists determination. So the $50 goes to Josephine Lincolns Osby of Shawnee Mission West. Este es un eh, reconocimiento para el más tenaz, un estudiante que demuestra determinación y persiste con tenacidad. Felicidades. So the next award goes to the most passionate. This is a student having a passion or expressing strong emotions. This student is, should be all of you, but we had to choose one. It goes to uh, Gustavo Ferrero of Shawnee Mission North. Este es un award para el estudiante más apasionado, eh, un estudiante que, que es apasionado y expresa emociones fuertes. Felicidades, Gustavo. The most congenial student is a student who is easy to work with, agreeable, suitable, or pleasing in nature or character. There, there was a tie, so there's two students that will get this award. Alada Geary of Shawnee Mission East. Come on up a lot. And Brian Davalis of Shawnee Mission South. Este es un eh, reconocimiento al más simpático estudiante con el que es fácil de trabajar eh, y carácter amigable. Felicidades. And to the most improved student is a student who has excelled on performance and requirements. So this award goes to Enrique Garcia, 
Bravo of Olathe North. El que demostró eh, mayor mejora es un estudiante que se ha sobre, sobrepasado los requerimientos del programa, eh, sobrepasando dificultades eh, y, dific, eh, inicialmente. Felicidades para Enrique. So this last award goes to most perseverance, a student in steady persistence in spite of difficulties or obstacles. This award goes to Lena Ortiz of Blue Valley Northwest. Este reconocimiento es para el más perseverante, un estudiante que consistentemente, sin embargo, dificultades y obstáculos persevera. Felicidades. Okay, very good. So now um, we like to go through and, and uh, thank our sponsors. Uh, they uh, like to name them um, and just to make sure you understand uh, how this program came about and uh, the funds that they provided us. Um, we have uh, the Sprint Foundation as our primary sponsor, State Farm, Google Fiber, Kansas City Power and Light, Enterprise Rental Car, uh, Qwit, Arvest Bank, and uh, Brenda Saragosa of C-Style. So let's give them a round of applause. And all the colleges and universities that provide uh, funds for our students are Kansas City, Kansas Community College, Johnson County Community College, Donnelly College, um, and UMKC. So let's give them a round of applause. We also want to thank the staff of the Hispanic Chamber. Gabriel Munoz over here in the stands. Let's give it Gabriel a round of applause. Uh, Alain Villapando, Brenda Gonzalez Salcedo, and uh, Yanni Vasquez. And then all the food, a lot of the food is donated. Um, Amaryllis works very hard to get good prices for us because we feed the students breakfast and lunch and snacks through the four-day program. So we have Chick-fil-A, Italian Gardens, National Bank of Kansas City gave us funding, Frito-Lay, Guadalupe Center, McDonald's, Panera, Pepsi, Cisco, Reina's Bakery, uh, Sylvia Orlano Gwen gave us funds also, and Foley Company who sponsored some of the food. Okay, um, and now we'll have uh, Amarillas, Valdez, Stemzi, and Edward Marquez uh, uh, read out your name as you graduate from the 2014 class of BizFest. It's exciting. So, um, the certificates are set up on the table on this side of the um, gymnasium. And uh, as they read your name, you can stand and please walk past this table, hold your certificate, and uh, walk through the stage and uh, shake the hands of some of the business committees uh, that will congratulate you for your uh, accomplishment. So, Edward Marquez and Amarillis Valdez Dempsey, we'll read you the names. Okay. BizFest committee members, please come up. All BizFest committee members, please come up. All right, so as I call your name, please come up. Uh, Alad Aguirre. Okay. Gabriela Arajo. Crystal Arrujo. Jehele Arteta Juarez. 
Gina Avitia. Alex Ayala. Ayala. Graciela Becerra. Laura Becerra. Zaini Borg. Daniela Briones. Blanca Castro Escobar. Daniela Castro. Brenda Chavez. Sarai Cruz. Brian Davalos. Navalin de Dios Falcón. Nayano Doe. Jacel Duarte. La Sheila English. Jennifer Farias. Carla Fitzgerald. Maricela Flores Martinez. Gustavo Forrero. Sandra Frasto. Mixi Galavez. Jennifer Garcia. Alejandra Garcia. Anthony Garcia. Juliana Garcia. Luis Garcia. Enrique Garcia Bravo. Oscar Hernandez. D'Angelo Hicks Jr. Maria Curupe. Judith Lavadores. Josephine Likens Osby. Iyari Lamas. Isaac, Isaac Lopez. <laughs> William Maldonado. <laughs> Silvia Mejia Camarillo. <laughs> Maria Mejia Ontiveros. Ana Montañas Espinosa. Salvador Montañas Espinosa. Carla Montes. Madison Nusselhoff. Oh, Nusselhoff. 
Karina Núñez Aguirre. Lina Ortiz. Amanda Palacios Valdez. Mariela Paramo. Joana Pérez Omana. Fátima Ramírez. Andrea Ramírez Hernández. Cintia Ra Ramos. Valerie Resendez. Yadira Reyes. Brisana Ricks. Sochin Rivera. Viviana Rodríguez Soto. Yvette Romero Benítez. Natasha Ruiz Flores. Lamond Rushing. Jennifer Rutiaga. Carol Sainz. Elicia Salazar Bonuelos. Islia Sanchez. Jocelyn Santos. Marisa Suarez. Catherine Suriano. Allison Turner. Norma Varona Ortiz. Ricardo Villalbazo. And Kelly Young. And those are the 2014 BizFest graduates. Oh, and Ricardo. Good job, Mitch. So another big hand to our 2014 BizFest graduates. As we wait for the uh, judges to decide on the top six of the winners of the, the order, um, I'd like to point out how this program uh, is, is, uh, is created, and it's really all about the volunteers, the BizFest committee in particular. Uh, it's, uh, no, nobody here is being paid. Uh, it's all 100% volunteer, all the funding, all the time, um, the scheduling, the, the food, everything happens from companies and uh, people in the corporate world who think that it is important to participate in this program to give you the opportunity to learn about business, learn about life, meet the mentors, and uh, to listen to the motivational speakers. So it's all of those uh, things that motivate our corporate donor donors, our mentors, and all the, others, all the other folks. Uh, they took vacation time. Uh, they came here on their own. Some of them took personal time off. 
just to participate and meet you and try to help you. So, um, Uh, we have a, um, a special uh, award that will be awarded from, by Google Fiber today. Uh, this is a new award for BizFest, and uh, Rachel Hack will present that award. Um, it, is, uh, uh, it goes to the company that best uses internet resources uh, out, of the fi out of the six finalists. And so I will let um, Rachel explain that. So while we wait, um, for the six finalist uh, decision, just wanted to give you that that uh, heads up. There be a, it's actually a tablet that will be donated by uh, Google to one of you. So um, that's that's exciting. Okay, so we now have uh, the list. I have the six. Uh, the, I have the winner of this fest. Uh, first. I would like to have uh, Rachel Hack uh, come up and explain. Uh, she's with Google Fiber. There's a special award, as I mentioned earlier, that um, is being presented for the first time at BizFest, and, and maybe we'll continue to do this um, for the next years. So Rachel, if you would come up and explain the award uh, and, and what it's about and who it goes to. Uh, this uh, special award we're giving to the business that's the most innovative, the most different than the others in their product or service category. And uh, we saw some really great ideas today, but the one that we thought was a really great twist and definitely needed out there was from Sochi for Zcare. So the award was a, a Nexus 7 tablet. Uh, so thank you, Google Fiber. Thank you, Rachel, for, for helping us with that. Um, so now we'll announce, uh, we'll start with number six. And the sixth place winner uh, of KC BizFest wins a $500 scholarship. And these are cash scholarships to be used uh, for college to pay towards tuition. And uh, our sixth place winner for Kansas City Biz Fest 2014 is Sochi Rivera. <laughs> Thank you. And if we could have some of the committee members also to congratulate our, our winners uh, to come up. The fifth place winner, KC Biz Fest 2014, gets $750 uh, scholarship. And that goes to Jocelyn Santos. <laughs> with J.C. Harmon High School. Our fourth place winner for BizFest 2014 gets a thousand dollar scholarship. And the fourth place winner goes to D'Angelo Hicks, J.C. Harmon. <laughs> The third place winner for BizFest 2014 gets $1,500 uh, scholarship. And um, that award goes to Alex Ayala. And now the second place, and then we'll know who the first place is. <laughs> so the second place winner for uh, BizFest gets $2,500. It's presented with a check. And um, that goes to Viviana Rodriguez Soto. <laughs> so the first place, KC BizFest 2014, the winner of the KC BizFest gets $3,500 scholarship. And that goes to Madison Nesselhoff. <laughs> so 
So there's a check, and there's a, some pictures we'd like to take. So if you could, the, the finalist here. So once again, thank you to the BizFest committee. Thank you for, um, to Shawnee Mission School District for hosting this event. And uh, uh, thank you to all the volunteers. Thank you to the parents and our sponsors. And uh, that concludes our BizFest 2014. So thank you very much. Welcome back. Uh, we just had the awards of the final winners and what an exciting afternoon it's been here at KC BizFest 2014. We're going to look forward to talking to some of the partners and some of the students, um, some of our uh, final winners today. But first I'm joined by uh, Dr. Ed Strike. Ed is the Chief Academic Officer here in Shawnee Mission School District. Uh, Ed, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Can you talk a little bit about, um, you were here throughout the week and, and got to observe the program. Talk Talk about the tie that it has with our focus today in education, K-12 education, on preparing students for the workplace. I think one of the greatest things about this type of an event is the growth that we observe within the students and the partnership with the real world. So many times education is taught, we're kind of condemned because we talk about education from the standpoint that why, when are we ever going to use this material? This type of opportunity provides a direct connection for students to be able to see how what they're learning in their classes actually translates into reality. I was really impressed as they went through their presentations with um, their knowledge just within a few days. Um, certainly they're bringing other experiences with them, but of different kinds of businesses, the financial, the break-even analyses, and some of the marketing components that they had really harnessed and put in in a relatively short time. Yes, the relevance from this program is extremely uh, impressive. They provide a tremendous amount of opportunity for the students to do background research, project management, as well as a cost-benefit analysis uh, looking at the future and the potential output that would be available if they entered into this business activity. You mentioned uh, some of the research. I was struck by that as well, where they had really looked at, um, you know, local and like certainly their direct competitors, but also uh, the, you know, some of the trends. And um, the, I think it was the young man that was doing the, maybe the Harmon Hub, where he talked about uh, research with the, the specific county and how it had ranked health-wise. Some really, you know, and that's what you'd have to do if you were truly going to be your own entrepreneur business owner. That's correct. He was able to access information via the web, obviously, but what he was able to do was actually look at the current reality and be able to use that current reality to make a prediction of how his business model would best meet the needs of the community. And that's tremendous connection. And certainly what we hope to do, I know our district has a digital learning initiative, but the ability to take not just access the information, but what do we want them to be able to do with it? Well, anyone can access information. The key is, can you take that information, build upon that, and make connections to problem solve? Because the one beautiful thing about today's world is, if you're uh, stuck in the past, you're not going to stay there very long. You have to be able to adapt. Knowledge is occurring at such a rapid rate that we have to be able to assimilate, utilize that new knowledge, and be able to problem solve. And this type of activity demonstrates that, tr that transition for students in education. Well, and certainly I think we saw even in just the six final presentations that they really were looking at um, some really current types of businesses and trends um, that they were going to try to meet those needs. Yes, they identified information. One of the students in, uh, pulled information from the CDC, pulling up information on childhood obesity, and which we've heard a great deal about in the news media, but they were able to translate that information and try to customize their approach to address that need. All right, well, thank you so much for joining us, and uh, we look forward to seeing what these students will be doing in years to come, I'm sure. Well, I appreciate the opportunity, and it was a tremendous learning opportunity for me, and I was very, very proud. Our future is in good hands when you see students like this perform at a high level. I absolutely agree. Thank, thank you. you. We are now going to have some of the students uh, joining, join us to talk a little bit about their uh, projects and their experiences. Hi, how are Hello, you? Hello, I am well. I'm Alex, nice to meet you. Alex, would you um, take just a moment and introduce yourself to the right. viewers? Hi, my name is Alex Ayala. I go to Mill Valley High School. I'm a junior there, and uh, I won third place here at KC BizFest 2014. Okay, so tell us about, you know, would they call your name? What does this right. mean for you? Well, 
Um, I don't, I mean, I was just a little starstruck, you know, I was really happy that I uh, even got to the top six, so, you know, um, I was happy that I was even able to make it, and, you know, I worked hard uh, in school and, you know, in class. Uh, I take marketing classes, I take um, all business classes, you know, and it interests me, so I was pretty happy that I got to experience it. So you actually do have an interest in business. I do. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, um, tell us, you know, what was the, the third place came with what kind of an award? Right, it was a, I think, $1,500 scholarship. Um, it's a... Uh, it's usable at any colleges that I want to go to for you know tuition um, costs and so I was pretty happy about that you know it's going to go to, to my college um, payments and stuff so I'm pretty happy with that. So. And do you have some ideas of, of where you think you want to go in the future? Um, honestly right now I'm not 200 percent sure but I'd like to go anywhere where they offer uh, audio classes, audio visual classes, anything with uh, audio engineering, you know, so and I've, I've researched uh, UMKC and uh, Kansas City, Kansas Community College, so um, those will probably be, I'd be looking forward to in the future. And the things that you learned in this short boot camp, yeah. really, um, you will, do you, did you acquire some things that you really think will take, you will take with you in the future that will help you? Yes, actually I did. I just, um, definitely working with people and, you know, um, meeting new people, definitely to get the word out and, you know, um, you know, just market yourself, market your company, market, you know, everything that you can. And um, it's just great to, you know, meet new people and especially in the business world. And I also learned, obviously, how to dress uh, successfully um, with the help of the mentors. And, you know, I, I hope it takes me somewhere in the future. So. Well, I have no doubt it will. Your presentation was impressive. Thank you very much. And I wish you great success. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right, so we had a chance to visit with Alex, and uh, we have another student, I believe, that's going to join us. She's coming right now. Hello. Hi. Um, can you introduce yourself to our viewers? I am Viviana Rodriguez from Shawnee Mission East. Okay, Viviana, tell us about just the experience, um, and maybe particularly the finals. Um, what were you What were you thinking? Was it nerve-wracking? Very, very nerve-wracking. <laughs> I was nervous. I was up there giving my presentation, and I was sweating. I was super, super nervous. I didn't think I would get this far. I didn't think it was that good. But when they called my name for top six, I was very, very shocked. But I'm very pleased with getting second. Yeah, I, well, congratulations. Thank you. And we certainly didn't notice any of those things when you were up there. You were very poised. Thank you. What are some of the, the important things? Um, first of all, I guess, how did you become involved with BizFest? Who told you about it? How did you learn about it? Um, friends, they told me about it. And then, like, the school, my school told us about it. And they all, like, got us together and they told us more about it. And so, by my school and some friends. Is the, the fact that, and um, we'll talk a little bit about what you took away from the experience overall, but placing second um, brings with it some scholarship um, assistance. Is that going to be, is that important to you? As that you is forward? very, very important. Um, JUCO, I had a scholarship for JUCO, and I'm going to plan on transferring to for uni university for vet tech or zoology. And so this is just fell from heaven. <laughs> it's great. It's going to be of great help to me. Good. And so it sounds like it's something in animal medicine is what you want to do? Yes. Very good. What, did, what do you think is the maybe the single most important thing that you take away from this experience? Though everything that I learned, there is so much that we learned this week, this, these four days. It was just very a very learning, good learn experience. All right. Well, Thank congratulations and great success to you ahead. Thank you. Ahead. you. Uh -huh. Thank you. As you can see, the scholarship um, opportunities are critical to these students and um, the learning and the confidence building that they take away. Welcome back. How we had no idea. Me either. <laughs> Tell us about, how, you know, when they called your name or when you saw the, the name swiddling down, what were you thinking? Just the whole time, sixth place, fifth place, fourth place, third place. I was just hoping it wouldn't be my name, but. I'm very surprised. I wasn't even expecting to be in the top six, so this is amazing. Well, congratulations to you. The presentation that you, you put together was terrific. Thank you. Um, how did you come up with the tagline? I thought that was great. Oh, join the pod. <laughs> I was actually, um, I googled things to do with like vegetables and stuff, and so I just saw pod and I thought it'd be a cute little way and an animation that I could do with peas and stuff. So that's what I... Very good. So now uh, you said that you were kind of waiting to hear, you know, based on what this might mean for you in the future. Yeah. Tell us now, you know, 
What do you, how's that? Is this a huge help for you? This is huge. I'm paying for my entire college, so I'm thinking either I'm going to have a great help for community college or I can go off to Pitt State and I can have a lot of help financially. This experience, I th I'm guessing I didn't know you before, but it, you are very poised and seem to have great confidence in front of in front of the audience. Um, did you did this help you really hone some of those skills? Yes, I'm actually very shy, and so even coming here the first day, we had to say our name in front of the entire class, mm -hmm. and just since then I've grown substantially. Well, I know that your family must be very proud of you. Your school will be very proud of you. And um, we congratulate you and wish you great success. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Next, uh, coming up, uh, is an interview with Cristal Perez. Now, she has a great story to tell. Welcome. And it's Cristal, right? Yes. OK. Tell us, you have a wonderful story, because you helped create Latinos of Tomorrow. And I believe, if I remember reading correctly, that that actually came out of the BizFest experience. Is that correct? Correct. Uh, Ten years ago, it seemed as it was just yesterday. <laughs> and what ex uh, inspired me was a quote by Gordon B. Hinckley that says, we are part of a chosen generation. Limitless is our potential. Magnificent is our future. And we don't let it drift away in an aimless and fruitless manner. Wow, that's what it's like. Powerful quote. And where did you find that? It's uh, from a prophet, an LDS prophet, mm -hmm. and in a book called uh, The Way to Be. Mm -hmm. And it really impacted me and inspired me, especially my passion for youth development. And you are still going strong, uh, leading uh, or as part of that group today. Is that correct? Are you still involved with Latinos of Tomorrow heavily? I, I, I do. I, I, I'm an advisor. I go to some of the meetings that I'm able to, to go to, but I'm always um, volunteering in their events and just I'm glad to see how it has um, had sustainability and how it, how it has progressed all throughout these years. Oh, but roughly how many uh, young people are involved with that program? And more than 150 members, and we've held more than 300 students in the metropolitan area with scholarships um, and so so on. One of the things I know from um, being involved with the school district that they offer are um, not just the scholarships, but helping the students understand how to access um, complete applications, um, know what to look for, who to visit with. Um, talk a little bit about that preparation and that educational part of Latinos of Tomorrow. Uh, we are always, like, like they said, uh, know thy audience, and we know that the students need a mentor, someone who sh uh, shows them how to, how to pave the way to success. And we have different committees uh, that throughout the year prepare and get these workshops ready. Uh, for example, ACT prep, uh, prep test, uh, ASA workshops, and we have them in local universities as UMKC and we have different um, speakers that come in and help us in that process. And students can find out if they don't know how to access them. Most, I think, counselors um, know about the program. Uh, where else could they find out information? We, through the Chamber of Commerce, we have contacts throughout the universities and local schools, and we're always, we have a newsletter uh, where they can subscribe and we can let, pass out the word. One last question, and that uh, revolves around your role today as a finals judge. Talk about that experience, and um, you know, I, I know just as a listener, I was so impressed, um, and what a difficult decision that would be. But talk about what you all look for as a panel um, within those presentations. Um, we look for innovation uh, for someone that um, has that passion and that um, are able to give back to the community. Some of the things that we look for. All right, well thank you so much. Thank you so Thanks much for, for your involvement with the program. No problem, thank you. Thank you so much for joining us today for KC BizFest 2014. I want to say a special thank you to all of the sponsors that provide uh, volunteers, the mentors, the judges, and particularly the higher education partners and the uh, donors who help provide in the sponsorship for the scholarship support. Thank you for watching.